2 Samuel chapter 11. And it came to pass, after the year was expired, so the end of the year, at the time when kings go forth to battle. So in the Bible, there were calendar times for kings to fight. Look at their calendars, it's time to go to war. That David sent Joab and his servants with him, and all Israel. And they destroyed the children of Ammon, and besieged, first time that word shows up, Ribba. Rabbi. But David tarried still at Jerusalem. Well, David didn't go into battle. David has done what most of the U.S. presidents in wartime. He stays in the capital. He should have been with Joab. He should have been on the battlefield. And it came to pass in the evening time. That's the first time that word shows up. Getting dark, getting nighttime. That David arose from off his bed. He was in bed, can't sleep, and walked upon the roof of the king's house. It's like a porch, maybe flat roof. And from the roof, he saw a woman washing herself. Now there's enough light around that he could see this woman from where he is. Now notice it says washing yourself. It was very beautiful. It doesn't say anything about nakedness. We don't know what she was washing. She may have been naked, but it's not recorded. The Bible knows the word naked. And Adam and Eve were naked and there was no shame. Adam and Eve knew they were naked and they hid themselves. And Peter jumped in the water because he knew he was naked. And Isaiah walked around, I forget how many, barefoot and naked. If she was naked, the Bible recorded. Because I've heard messages, oh, the, this pitiful woman is exposing herself. Doesn't say it. Doesn't say where she is. I mean, she, I'm speculating. But if she's inside her house and there's a window, she's got privacy to do what she wants. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. So we're getting the lust of the eyes. David's looking, you see, he turns again, he looks back more. And he realizes that not only is it a woman, okay, he looks again, she's beautiful. And he looks again, not only is she beautiful, but she's very beautiful. The lust of the eyes. And David sent and inquired after the woman. That, now, that should, this should have never happened. He should have got inside the house. But he's going to find out who this woman is. And isn't it interesting that Inquired is also named one of the magazines on the shelf. And one said, someone, we don't know who it is, is not this Bathsheba, the first time Bathsheba shows up, the daughter of Elam. Now that's important. Why? I don't know. But the person reporting to David saying, you know, you ought to know who that family is. And you'll find Elam, which is mentioned in 1 Chronicles 3, 5. There's another name for him. We'll get, we'll, we don't need to turn there. But he has another name. But Elam is kind of funny because it means God's people. <laughs> and I don't know if this person talking to David, you know, that's God's people. If you ever mentioned my daughter's name, Rachel, I know that means in you. But not only is she the daughter of Elam, somebody of importance. It wouldn't have been said. The wife of Uriah, the Hittite. All right, so she's someone's daughter, David. And she's someone's wife. And David, don't we have already read, you've got enough wives. And David sent messengers, besides the fact that she's already married, he sent messengers and took her. And she came in unto him and laid with him. Now, he's the king. 
You do not assert the authority of a king as you would do with a president. This man has the power of life and death. Now we're not told if she went willingly. And we're not told if she went fearfully. But King David wants you. And she came on to him. And he lay with her. So the implication is he was the master of the ceremony. It would have said they laid together or she laid with him. It was put on her or both of them together. He laid with her. For she was purified from her uncleanness. She is past the time of the motherhood. She's past the time of womanhood. And when those that type of month comes, she would have to go to the temple and she would have to purify herself, being a sinner. And this would have been the time that a woman is susceptible to be coming pregnant. I love that book. Purify her and cleanse, and she returned unto her house. If the act has happened, she gets dressed and she goes home. And the woman conceived and sent and told David and said, I am with child. Now this has got to be plus or minus three months. Maybe the first month after she's been cleansed, she's like, uh, her, her period, her menstrual cycle, I haven't got it. And her husband's at war. And I don't know, maybe second or third month, but at least... Then she thought, you know, David, you got to get your word. We got a problem here. Because they're at war. Her husband's at war. Uriah is one of David's mess, uh, soldiers. And with that, David sent. She sent for David, and David sent to Joab. Saying, send me. Look at this. Sent to David. Send Joab. I mean, sent to Joab. Send me Uriah. The Hittite. And jo, uh, Joab sent Uriah to the Look at the sense. And when Uriah was come unto him, David, Uriah is taken off the battlefield by command of Joab. The word gets to Joab. Here's a message from the king. I want Uriah. They're out in the battlefield. Joab goes, send me Uriah. Uriah approaches the Joab. Yes, sir. The king wants to see you. Okay. Go, make haste. <laughs> and when Uriah was come unto him, David demanded of him how Joab did, and how the people did, and how the war prospered. And he's just like talk. What's going on? What happened? How's the battle going? What's the war front? Any casualties? Any victories? We winning? We losing? And David said to Uriah, Notice it's, it's not recorded what Uriah answered him. David didn't care. How is this small talk? And David said to Uriah, Go down to thy house and wash thy feet. <laughs> because your wife was washing herself. Look at it. Sent, 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 wash, washing. And Uriah departed out of the king's house. And there followed him a mess of meat from the king. Mess. That doesn't mean he was sloppy and dirty. What is this term? It's a military term. We are in a military campaign chapter. Mess is a mess hall where you get chow, where you get your dinner, you get your lunch, you get your breakfast. And the army is called the mess hall. I forget what the Navy called it. I'm trying to think of it. It's a Bible word mess. It's already been prepared. Like yep. He wants Bathsheba to be completely happy that her husband's home and he's got all kinds of goodies. Bathsheba's not food. But, but, but. Uriah slept at the door of the king's house with all the servants of his Lord. 
That's kind of funny. All the servants. I, I wonder if there's like little guard shacks that you will see in the military. And Uriah, a soldier that is due for combat situation right now. And I'm going to say as far as I know the rules of war. He's not going home while the men are on the battlefield. And the next best thing he can find a war duty is he's at the guardhouse. He's not on duty so he can sleep. And he's like, hey, if you guys need to be re relieved, you want to go get some eat, you got to go to the bathroom, whatever it is, I will stand your duty. Just wake me up. But I'm on duty. And he went not down to his house. This is a faithful soldier. And when they had told David, saying, Uriah went not down unto his house. He got, where did the food go? You know where I think it went? I think Uriah gave it to the, to the, the servants. Here, guys, the king sent me all this food and all that. While we're on duty, why don't we not eat? He said, well, why can you say that? Well, I was in the military. I was in the U.S. Navy. When I'd be in... In, in the bunks with, with the men and all that we get a care package from home we open it up it'd be candy it would be a cake or something like that we would share it with all the men in the bunks in our company wow your mom made you cook chocolate chip cookies and it would be shared among and we would even break the cookies if there wasn't enough and I don't want to tell you how a soldier would, would divide a cake but the cake got divided amongst all the people and this thing wouldn't be go wash your feet, but you better wash your hands. And with this mess that Uriah got from David, I'm going to assume, and I can be wrong, that he shared it with, with the servants of the house, as any military officer would do. Hey, we're all bunkies right now. We may, may not be on the battlefield, but here we are. This would be carrying by the stuff. So that Uriah went not down unto his house. David said to Uriah, Camest thou not from thy journey? Yeah, I was ordered to. Why then didst thou not go down unto thy house? Now verse 11. It's David's old life. What Uriah is going to say to David, David's going to hear, is the old David. The young battlefield David. And Uriah said to David, the ark, that's the presence of the Holy God amongst Israel. We don't have that presence of the Lord, but the Holy Spirit in our hearts. And Israel, those are God's people. And Judah, that is the nation chosen by God, the reign of Jesus Christ to come. Abide in tents. Did you get that? What was David just complaining about with the Lord a few chapters ago? <coughs> excuse me. Lord, you divide. <coughs> excuse me. Lord, you dwell in tents. I'm in a cedar house. That ain't right. Your eyes say, listen, we dwell in tents. David was in a cedar house walking on the roof. And Uriah has no idea what he's saying. He's just, David asked him a question and he's answering the question. That's why he didn't go home. That's why he dwelt with, with the servants or the guards. Why should I go home in my wooded house or stone, whatever kind of house, and my people are in tents, and he's not even a Jew. He's a Hittite. He's one of them people that are mentioned that God says you get rid of. This man that is of a heathen nation is more faithful than David right now. And my Lord Joab, that's my leader, that's my commander. And the servants of my Lord, Joab's servants, the men that are under his authority, are encamped in the open field. They're not home. Joab's not home. We're on the battlefield. And you want me to go home? And sleep in my nice comfortable bed next to my nice warm wife? Joab's not with his wife. Joab's not home in his house. 
My fellow soldiers are in tents out in the grass. Or whatever the, that's in those fields, in rocks. Shall then I go into my house? That's what David wants. To eat and drink? That's what David wants. And to lie with my wife? That's what David wants. Now, we don't know how far this time has been. If it's months, it, the time frame still won't fit. But David's not thinking rationally. As thou livest, the king, as the king liveth, as thy soul liveth, the soul of the king, I will not do this thing. I'm not going home. Man, he's rebuking David and he doesn't even know it. And David's getting angry right there in front of him. And I'm wondering, as David's face, the continent is getting angry and angry. And you wonder what Uriah is saying. What did I just say? What's going on here? He ought to be, as my king and the commander in chief of the forces that I am under Joab, this man ought to be happy because I'm being faithful to the king, I am being faithful to jo uh, Joab. He doesn't mention God. I am being faithful to the military powers under Israel. Why on earth is this king getting mad at me? And David said to Uriah, tarry here today also. And tomorrow I will let thee depart. So Uriah, Uriah dwelt in Jerusalem that day and on the morrow. Huh? abode in Jerusalem that day and on the morrow. He didn't go home. And when David had called him, he did eat and drink before him. Now he's going to try to get drunk. And he made him drunk. Alcohol will change your conduct. I'll get him drunk. And he won't know what he's doing. And at even, we were at even time before, at even, 6 p.m., he went out to lay on his bed with the servants of the Lord. But went not down in his Even drunk. Even incapacitated. I ain't going home. That is not my place. David wants him to go home. David wants him to be with his wife. So the thing is, when, when, when she was found out to be pregnant... It's got to be your right because remember that time he had to leave. Remember David called him and he went home and there's the pregnancy. No questions asked and it can't be so because Uriah won't go home. Now we're going to end right there because we're going to pick up the second part. We're going to pick up the proper military soldier Uriah is and he's going to carry his own death orders. And we're going to read about the death of Uriah, a faithful man. And I don't think we, I think we should just break right here and study the rest on another night.